Hey there everybody. So uh, tonight I want to share some of my ideas um, or possibly understanding. I don't know how to put this. Um, <clears throat> so I've been thinking about uh, getting into the music business for a really long time but haven't really gotten anywhere. I've been kind of, kind of sidetracked doing this and that. Especially um, trying to, uh, to get my black belt in kung fu tried to do martial arts be an instructor i tried to do something where i thought maybe i could make some money doing something i enjoy and then try music and you know so there's a long story about why i didn't do it or whatever but anyway so i'm trying to get back on track and uh and i'm trying to get myself ready so that way i can set up and then finally work on this said music project right but uh, the good thing about it taking some time is uh, maybe it's given me the opportunity to, to grow in different ways and, and contemplate uh, what I would do with that opportunity. And and I've been like reflecting on my history with these videos and stuff and thinking about how it all ties in for me, you know, what exactly uh, what I do. But by kind of like looking back on what I've been listening to and what I've been attracted to the most. So, um, I'm making a series I call the Jody Vision to talk about this area of my life where I think it has to do with maybe my my music career planning. So I haven't been exactly sure what to call this topic, but it seems like that it, it consists of um, psychic awareness. I'm, so some of the stories I'm telling you about, like going to visionary state, you know, paranormal psychic awareness. But this kind of ties in with industrial music because also you know some of my favorite artists. Uh, seem to appreciate the subject matter too, which I'm going to talk about. Um, it does tie in anyways, but, um, but there's a certain facet here. So if you were to say, go back into my playlist, um, I did a video earlier on, uh, like the PTSD of the soul and how that seems to relate in industrial music. And I was kind of inspired to share this idea because I was listening to Janice Peorage, um, who was part of Throbbing Gristle and Psychic TV. That's, um, <clears throat> he seems to be such an important uh, person in this music scene, right? And you know, a lot of people have listened to his ideas. So um, I, love, I love listening to him talk. He's right about a lot of things. So I felt like I was definitely meant to, to come across this critter and, 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 and get his confirmation and a little bit of expansion because I feel like we're like-minded on so many levels. But anyway, so he was definitely a major advocate for psychic awareness and uh, magic, you know, this type of thing. But anyways, what he was talking about was, um, you know, he was getting close to dying. And every time he had a near-death experience, he would experience, you know, the the PTSD from his past life. And I felt like, you know, I had that idea a little bit already. Like I'm thinking, you know, what, you know, cause I contemplate a lot about, you know, what, what's been going on with this music scene and stuff. And, and I've had some ideas for a, a few different reasons, how, um, some of the people that are making the music I listen to, like, or like my father, you know, particularly, cause some of the stuff that's, that's some of the stuff that he's brought home. Um, maybe these are souls who have reincarnated after dying in like, you know, World War II or something in the Nazi war, because, you know, my father, for example, loves to study up on the World Wars, you know, so I've, um, I haven't read about it as much as, as much myself, you know, I just kind of know what we get in general history, but like, I've listened to him talk about it so much, I probably did extend my knowledge, so, you know, he's always had a fascination in these wars, you know, and um, and I feel like some of the, the artists we listen to seem to reflect on that. And, you know, like a lot of people might realize, but I really think, um, you know, we're, we're very much an anti-war uh, community, you know. So um, anyways, um, back to that PTSD video, um, I felt like um, that's a good uh, thing to look at. Um, I think I was talking, you know, I called the uh, Joy Division jo Joy Division because I was explaining how you know, there's just, you know, I was, um, I was really a big Joy Division New Order fan. And I think I did a series of four videos just explaining a little more about the music I listen to. I did um, a playlist for my music collection. So for what I have left, I did a playlist. This is some of it right here. We're going to talk about this pretty shortly. Uh, you know, there's just a certain facet of music that I picked up on that I am attracted to. And I think, you know, I listen to music that 
it sounds a lot like the music I would play if I could be a musician. Maybe that's the best way to put it. And I predominantly like synthesizer-based music. I think a lot of it's very psychedelic. I think that a lot of it um, tends to be sort of the underground. It's like uh, somebody once said, like particularly with industrial music, it's almost like it's the electronic equivalent to punk, except that it might be even more intelligent. You know, much more intelligent as well. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. So I'd say that would be Val Vale must have said that. And he's one that um, likes to write up on, so he, he's written a book about industrial music culture, right? So he has a pretty um, good idea about that. Um, and so, like, this might be a better conversation for people who are familiar with the music I'm talking about. But if not, we can still make this interesting because there's still some valuable concepts about... Um, so if you've listened to my other videos, I believe in the possibility of reincarnation and some of our issues carrying over, and in this case, some of it could be PTSD, like if you're a warrior spirit, like I may have been, you know, somebody who's done battle in other lifetimes, and um, I'm kind of wondering if some of these guys that are tied in, I don't really see myself so much with that connection to the world wars, I kind of feel like, you know, I grew up with industrial music, but I wasn't really there, like I, I feel like I'm more second, I'm a second-hand experiencer, but um, it's kind of um, inspired me like in the direction I'm going with my music and art life. I feel like there's a lot of, I don't know, believe it or not, values, right? So I feel like, you know, it's a it's a school of thought, you know, so I, I, I see myself as the ongoing art school, uh, the art student, right? I've been a never-ending art student and this is just one of the places I learned from and I often thought by the way that uh, Genesis Peorge seems like he came in the world to be an art teacher and and strangely, he is. He uh, he got a job teaching a class at a college for a little bit. So he wasn't really like a full-time teacher, but that's the kind of um, art culture this is. I feel like it. Um, it it's very vast. I think that industrial music uh, culture, you know, because it's kind of eclectic, and as it's expanded, it's just sort of like, you know, it's not just about music. It's the, the art and philosophy. I think it's a little bit of an extension of the beatnik uh, or beat generation, you know, so just for the fact that like, um, you know, these, uh, the people that are attracted to it are people like William Burroughs and Timothy Leary, those are the people that get involved with these characters, stuff like that, those are things that tell me, you know, um, I kind of think of it more of a uh, psychedelic intellectual culture, but I'm just like, you know, uh, there was also a lot of um, just strange art back in the, you know, like I guess as we were going into the 60s, into the 70s, and we were going through a really heavy psychedelic time, there was just kind of a strange art movement anyway, so it's almost like it was really cool to be strange, and, you know, so I think, you know, we were, you know, a lot of people were breaking boundaries with their culture and stuff. I feel like, um, you know, I just was sort of born into this little niche, you know, kind of feeling, well, so I had a funny concept, you know, saying, my father feels like he was born the year <laughs> rock and roll was, or I was born the year industrial music was. So, you know, some of these ideas, like uh, with the music they started to make, the, the connections they started to make, what if we're calling beings into existence, right? So I was born to to, to be here for this time, and uh, that music could have brought me here, man, you know? That music could have brought me here, but I want to, like, instead of, like, start another industrial band, like, um, go on to something um, more advanced, you know, what's the next stage, you know, I feel like I'm more of a coming here to respond and, and and do my own thing, you know, I'm like not here to, to, you know, just continue something that's already been done and over with, right, so the thing about industrial music it was um, also very contemporary, that's what makes it done and over with, but the, the spirit that lives on, you know, changes shape, see, and a lot of people, um, Chris and Cozy, I was reading about um, something where Cozy Fanny Tootie says something like, when people get the the form, you know, they get that, you know, it's hard, brash, crazy sounding music, but they don't get the spirit behind the form. And so that's why there's so much boring music like that, you know, so I really feel like there's really only a few people that really mastered this whole, you know, industrial kind of thing. And so I don't know if there's other masters out there and I haven't heard them, but anyways, um... <coughs> I feel like, um, so what I've been sharing, like, with my personal life, I feel like I'm getting trained for something, but the way, way it's being brought about and, and kind of, you know, the, the, the thing about, you know, turning me on the front line assembly and all that stuff, it, it kind of makes sense, and, and so that's where, you know, I feel like I'm kind of making sense of that at the same time, you know. So I, I had this little joke that it's called, um, 
military industrial techno, <laughs> right? You know what, what? What's up with all those military industrial techno? Like they're not the only ones. There's a couple other bands, you know, like Front Two Forty Two, obviously. But then Mussolini Headkick are very military. Nutzer Ebb, you know. There's a you know seems to him FDM um, that kind of militariness, you know, like oh so. So it's like I've, I've been listening to all this music with my dad, and so it's, it's like you know how you listen to music, you get exposed to, but you never really break it down. You never really learn the lyrics. You never really learn the deep meaning. I don't really have all that, so I'm not that deep. I'm not that kind of fan, but I feel like it's just always been in my aura. Like I've always been around this music, and and there's just something to do with the psyche. Like even though I didn't know what was going on, so like later on, I'm looking back and reading books, and you know, so later on, reading band biographies, and I'm like, oh, okay, well. I definitely feel like, you know, I don't just like this music for being familiar, it's like, you know, like when I was reading about, um, you know, Cabaret Voltaire or, you know, like some of the stuff Genesis says, um, all this type of stuff, and uh, New Order, I really loved reading about them. They're not an industrial band, but they were like kind of part of that, that circuit, you know, they were always close friends with people that make industrial music, that's the funny thing. But um, I felt like New Order was uh, probably one of my favorite bands to listen to because they were a little bit safer to listen to around other people because I, I liked a lot of my dad's music and I really liked the hard stuff, but I just felt like, you know, um, New Order was safer to listen to around people. Maybe I started listening to them more because I felt like, you know, I was looking for a way to, to have music that's more agreeable but is still good. And so um, maybe that's the thing there, but... Um, yeah, it's just um, some ideas that have been coming to mind now. I um, I got, I think I got some valuable training by going off to the uh, to the Indian. So I made friends with Lakota people that do like ceremonies and stuff. So I um, you know, I, I hung out with them a couple times, and there's a few important things I took away from that, and some of the things I'm reading. So you know, one of my favorite Indians in history is uh, his crazy horse, and so I uh, got a chance to meet some people that are you know, related with that tribe, and um, and some of the things I learned is that their ceremonies, uh, music is very important, and one of the things that they're doing is, um, it's a healing, and just doing their ceremony is like very important, there's always singing and drumming, music is a very important part of the healing, so we're not only healing ourselves, but we're also healing our ancestors, there's a lot of people who have died in a, um, an unfortunate death because of all the warfare, you know, when they came in, so many Indians died, so so they have the idea that um, we're healing our ancestors, so some of the ceremonies we do, we're healing our ancestors, and so um, some of the ideas I've also had is that um, whether you've been a veteran from a past life or maybe a veteran from this life, and you're dealing with all that, um, you know, you haven't healed from it yet, um, I feel like this is what uh, some of the music I've listened to kind of does for us. Like one day my dad said, um, you know, people think that, you know, if you put on like skinny puppy, that it's going to make you angry. And he goes, no, it's the other way around. It's like, I come home angry, I put on skinny puppy, and it helps take it out of me, you know. So it's actually a healing effect. It doesn't invigorate it or make things worse. It's the other way around. So, um... Now this is the Sundance music, it seems to be like kind of brash, you know, it's very brash and hard. So, so uh, the thing about industrial music is that it's very intuitive, okay? So some of the people who, who started out, particularly like the guys with the throbbing gristle, I, I would say the whole band probably were into the idea of psychic awareness and, you know, m magic in their music, right? So, so I, um, like I was saying, I've been looking for magic, so here's a bunch of people that believe in magic and how they apply it. Well, Anyways, um, well, when I was back to like uh, using the music as healing, so they always had, in, so I, I feel like industrial, the people that were making industrial music were being intuitive when they started to develop this music. Whereas uh, I love the, the thing I love about the Native Americans here, the Lakota particularly, is they place a lot of value on intuition, you know. That's very important. And so um, that's where we get the ideas like so. They do their ceremonies and uh, they pretty much stay the same because that's how we communicate to the spirit world is by using recognizable uh, language and songs and ceremonies. 
And the thing is, is music really helps us to communicate to the other side. That's why it's so important at church that there's music. For example. So people know this, that music really helps get the angels to listen, right? It, the, it, uh, um, it, it's a way that we can, you know, create a conduit between us and the spirit world. So that's what makes music so damn important. So, you know, some music is just, eh, it's just there to sell, you know, product. Like you got like a little jingle, all the person selling their Twinkies, you know, or whatever. Then you can take music to mid, uh, middle of the road to the highest level, right? So, so I think you know I've always liked higher music. So that's where, you know, if you think let's say um, industrial music is just a bunch of noise, then you got the wrong idea. Actually, some of it is a higher music. It's not just a bunch of noise. That's the that's the whole thing, you know, is that they're able to make sounds that aren't typically traditional and make it work <laughs> to, to to the expression of music. So all that matters is. The outcome. See me as the listener. I really don't see what you're doing in the studio. You might just have like a bunch of buttons and shit. I don't know what you got in there. All I care is what happens when I put the record in my my record player. You know, like so. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's the thing about um, you know, kind of a concept. It doesn't really matter. So I just feel like you know, it has something to do with that intuition. You know, why we're doing it, and you know, so um, so just another piece of my personal life. I'll share about my visions and. How, like back in 1982 I had that vision and well, that's where I met Rosie and Howard for the first time in a visionary state and what I wanted to say about Howard is um, Rosie would tell me that there were things we had in common like she kind of felt like he was also a veteran soul like when he came into this life time and he's the one who uh, went on to be a, um, someone to run a Zen monastery so seriously into Zen so I feel like you know he's somebody who in his uh, incarnations has been in many brutal battles and then in this life said you know this time around I really don't want to fight ever again and you know something he's even said himself is and he really hopes he's never gonna have to kill anyone ever again you know so um, I feel like I'm in the same boat you know I feel like maybe you know I'm similar like this is why I was attracted to Shella now Howard he was also attracted to martial arts now in my um, my martial arts uh, list I call it a battle black belt um, there's some weapons I inherited and there's some weapons he made, and I mentioned this before. This is the one of the latest things. Now Rosie mentioned this to me, but this is the only time he's ever tried making a knife, and it came out so well. And um, so anything he made that is a weapon, and this is a real weapon. Um, I'm gonna keep these weapons sacred, meaning that you know I might train with them, but by keeping them sacred, um, I will never use them to hurt anybody. So I don't I don't carry weapons like this for self defense. I just keep them because I enjoy them. So I just go empty handed. I don't, you know, I hate to give away personal information. I'm just saying, don't, don't think, you know, you're going to see me taking this weapon someplace. You know, you don't need to expect me to be that crazy. I'm crazy. I'm not that crazy. But anyways, the thing about stuff like that, um, I think this is really neat. I'm so, you know, I feel like, so I've inherited some of the things that Howard has left behind and, and, you know, knowing Rosie, um, I didn't get to, to meet him very many times and she shared a lot of things about Howard and she kept telling me, how we have something in common. And so that's one of those things that made me see something of myself, you know, meeting Howard, how, um, you know, I could be that veteran soul that decided that in this lifetime, I don't want to, um, you know, die fighting or, or kill anybody fighting. And um, and so the, the thing in uh, Lakota culture that I thought was interesting is um, some people um, that uh, have been uh, the type of Indians that go to combat, so the ones that have been warriors, some of them want to quit their warrior life and just become a medicine man, or you know, we call it uh, to put down the spear and to pick up the drum. And I love that saying, and I almost feel like that's kind of what we're doing in our lifetime for those of us uh, that you know, we might be a warrior spirit, we might you know, have it in us to put up that fight if we need to, right? That type of thing, but um, but I would much rather you know you know, put that sharp sword in storage and uh, plug in my synthesizer uh, or pick up the, so put down the spear and pick up the drum as I think is what's happening in some cases. So I kind of wonder that about, of course, Bill Lee, because, you know, he's the one that comes to me in my visions and, and the one that I've been sharing these stories about. So there might be a reason why, you know, this is being shown to me. I wanted to point out here, by the way, um, this is pretty much all I got left from my CD collection, and the reason I've got it packed up like this is I'm, I'm preparing to move possibly, and I pulled out my, um, the stuff that uh, is by Bill Lieb. So the big, the big stack is the Frontline Assembly, but um, 
that's a good chunk of music if you look at the space it takes up and then uh you know some of the other stuff i have in there i think i have a big chunk of like cabaret voltaire and then richard kirk has a lot of stuff that's like all his different side projects and there's i think i have a good piece of skinny puppy but then i really liked kevin key a lot of that stuff and um and so the collection i have here is kind of before i left denver so there's a lot of that type of industrial, post-industrial, but then, you know, if you watch my video, my music collection, I'll show you everything in there. I think most of my music is kind of psychedelic and heavy. Um, I do have a little bit of, um, I used to be a DJ hater, but I've discovered that uh, some of the side trance is pretty deep in psychedelic. And so I like the, uh, the kind of trance music that's more like industrial or more, you know, to that tangerine dream quality. Vice versa, I think I've always liked, you know, like out of my dad's music, I always like the stuff that had that techno sound. That's why I like New Order. They had, they were able to conjure up a really good techno sound. And uh, so a lot of the music I like has a good techno sound. So that could tell you right now, like if I was able to write my own music, it would definitely have, I hope, a good techno sound, right? But yeah, I really feel like um, it's, it's a funny concept, you know, like being a warrior musician at the same time. So in light of, um, you know, I might be a warrior spirit or veteran spirit, right? I'm, I'm like the person, I want to put down that spirit and pick up the drum. But I'm still going to train martial arts a little bit. And I wanted to share this uh, weapon. Uh, this is a basic rattan staff that's come with Shaolin. Now, the person who prepared this was uh, my, my Kuntao Silat teacher, Roger Brockman. And so I kind of like he didn't shave those off. He left that on there. That's a good weapon. Now, he's the one that put that red and white tape up there. Now, those colors and that light, they might represent um, how we combine our love and our wisdom, or our passion and our wisdom, see? So that red is kind of that hearty energy, and that white is kind of that wisdom energy. So, you know, so that weapon I train with, you know, um, when I train with it, I want to make sure that um, I'm in, uh, incorporating or infusing um, that love and wisdom into all my training. But I'm not a deadly person, I'm just a formidable person right so anyways yeah I could be uh, on to something so like you know saying um you know when it comes to industrial music it's a really vast sort of subculture like I just feel like I'm in my own little niche where like I feel like who knows maybe what's happening you know why, why do we listen to some of the music we like and why is it why do we enjoy that why is it invigorating why you know why don't we see something wrong with that other people it's, it's just not for them you know that's where if somebody's gonna come along and tell you there's something wrong with your music. Maybe that's just not for them, but it's it's for you. And if you're the one that's you know putting that music on and and it's making you know if it's a healing music. So that's you know what I think we're getting at is I do like my music to have, you know, it, it does seem to have a, a psychologically healing quality. But I was saying in my last video, some of it just really does. You know, I just some of the stuff I listen, to, I just feel like oh yeah, I just oh that's what makes you want to dance or move. Um, I don't know what it is, so I think it just like some of the higher music does seem to be very magical, um, and then so I've been trying to put together what am I doing? Um, so I don't want to ramble on too much, but I'm just trying to find a way to wrap this up because time's up for my video. Um, <laughs> so the idea of uh, you know it, it might be a new idea to some people, but maybe some of the music we're listening because you're a veteran soul and it's healing to you and um, not only that but you're not just a regular old person you know, I really feel like some people are magical people they need that higher music and that higher art in their life they just can't settle for less and so um, that's why you have people like my dad he's a very picky collector and has helped expose me to a lot of this uh, music that I know about and um, since I've left uh, Denver and been living in Montana I've been kind of stagnant like I, I listen to like the trance radio station I find online, but I really haven't discovered any new artists since, you know, since Frontline Assembly and all those, like How Job maybe, but really, you know, like I'm not too impressed with all the new stuff coming out, I just think, you know, they all come out, it's like a Halloween contest, you know, like they're trying to see who could be the scariest, most spookiest, and deadliest, or whatever, you know, just, you know, people just, um, I don't know, it just gives people a chance to like act like a weirdo and get away. I don't get it. So um, I call it the goth rock. I don't know what it is, but I I'm, I'm just haven't been able to really find another Kevin Key or another Bill Lieb. You know, there's just, you know, when those guys are dead and gone, you know, 
I really hope, um, see, I, I just feel like, you know, maybe one of the reasons I've been a procrastinator is I don't know if I'm ever going to be out, able to outdo those guys either. So not saying I think I could measure up, but I do feel like at some point I need to start to be, a, start being a more responsible artist and start recording some goddamn music. Cause otherwise, you know, um, I, I don't know if anybody out there gets it. Everybody thinks it's about being loud and crazy and no, no, it's deeper. It's higher. It's, you know, it's so much deeper. Come on. Anyways, that's my uh, a little insight on the direction I want to take in music, kind of based on like where I'm coming from and where I'm going. I feel like we're getting ready to go into a really bad time. I keep hearing it every day. It's going to be World War III. The big volcano is going to go off. The new is going to come by. and We're just going to... So who knows what's going to happen next. All I know is you better find that inner strength. And you might even try to make that industrial strength at the rate we're going. Okay, you guys? Take care. I'll talk to you next time.